Hello students and a very good morning to you. I hope you all are well and focusing on your studies. Students, today we are going to start our second chapter of class 8 science that is microorganisms. This chapter will be divided in two parts. So this is the first part of this chapter. As the name of the chapter is microorganisms. So what are microorganisms? In your previous classes also, you have studied about microorganisms. So we know that on this planet Earth, two main types of living organisms are present, that is plants and animals. And we can see them by our naked eyes, means they are visible to us without any special aid. But students, there are so many living organisms that are so tiny and we cannot see them and they are present in our air, they are present in our water, they are present in soil and they are not visible to us. For seeing them, we have to use some special aid that is microscope. So such microscopic organisms, they are so tiny. When we see them through microscope, then only they are visible to us and such microscopic organisms are called microorganisms. Micro so, let's have a look what we are going to study in this chapter. In this chapter, we will be studying about major groups of microorganisms. So, there are five major groups of microorganisms that is bacteria, fungi, algae, protozoa and viruses. After that, we will study about habitats of microorganisms. Then useful microorganisms. Useful microorganisms means what are the uses of microorganisms and how they are beneficial for human beings. Then we will study about harmful microorganisms and at last what is food preservation. So these two topics that is harmful microorganisms and food preservation we will study about uh, them in our second part. In this part, we will, st we will start from microorganisms. Now, as you know students, that large number of tiny organisms, they are present in air, water, soil. Some are present in our body also. Some are present at the surface of the body or surface of other organisms. And these tiny organisms, they are so small that we cannot see them with unaided eye. Means we can see them only with the help of microscope. So those tiny organisms who can be seen only by using a microscope, such organisms are called microorganisms or microbes. Means the tiny organisms that cannot be seen without unaided eye or they can be seen by using a microscope only. Such organisms are called, such microscopic organisms are called microorganisms. Now, Antony von Leeuwenhoek, he was a Dutch textile worker. He was the first person who is known to have seen bacteria using his own microscope. He made his own microscope and his own microscope was able to magnify objects to 300 times, means it make the object larger 300 times their original size. So, and first of all, he saw microorganism in rainwater so he was the first microscopist because he made, first of all, he made microscope and he was the first microbiologist also who study about microbes. That is why he is credited as a father or as a father of microbiology. Okay. Next thing, the study of microorganisms means the branch of science where we study about microbiology this field of science this branch of science is called microbiology next we will study about major groups of microorganisms so there are five uh, major groups of microorganisms that is bacteria fungi algae protozoa and viruses so first we will start with bacteria 
bacteria among all the microorganisms bacteria are the most abundant bacteria is the plural word its singular number is bacterium and they are among all the microorganisms bacteria are the most abundant organisms they are simplest of all living organisms they are found almost everywhere on the earth means they are found in air water soil in food products in uh, inside the bodies of other organisms they are uh, they are present in the roots of uh, plants means they are found every everywhere okay and they are very smaller in size next thing they are autotrophs or heterotrophs autotrophs means they can prepare their own food by the process of chemosynthesis chemosynthesis is a process which is similar to photosynthesis so bacteria are autotrophs as well as they are heterotrophs only means sometimes they can obtain their food some of the bacteria they can obtain their food they can obtain their nutrition from dead and decaying organic matter so in such cases they are called sap uh, saprophytes then they can obtain food from other organisms also in this case they are called parasitic bacteria and we all have studied that sometimes they may be present in the symbiotic association also so nutrition is both the types autotrophic as well as heterotrophic now bacteria they are of various shaped they are rod shaped when they are rod shaped then they are called bacillus they are spherical shaped then they are called uh, cocci they are spiral shaped then they are called spirella ants they are comma shaped also then they are called vibrio some forms are pathogenic means some forms can cause diseases in human beings in plants as well as in other animals also about the reproduction of bacteria we have studied in class 7th then that they uh, reproduce by the process of binary fission okay now some of the examples of bacteria are lactobacillus lactobacillus streptococcus these two bacteria lactobacillus is very common which is found in milk streptococcus is also it is also present in milk vibrio cholerae e coli vibrio cholerae is the causal organism of disease cholera so these are the some examples of bacteria now next type of or next group of microorganism is fungi fungi is a plural word its singular number is fungus they are unicellular or multicellular in case of unicellular we have studied about yeast yeast is unicellular means they are made up of single cell or they may be present of they may be made up of multi cells means they are multicellular as mushrooms bread molds aspergillus so when they are made up of multicellular means when they are multicellular these multicellular fungi they are made up of microscopic thread like structure and these microscopic thread like structures are called hyphae then they are heterotrophic in nature heterotrophic in nature means they cannot make their own food why because they are not having photosynthetic pigment that is why they cannot make their own food and they depend on others for their food so when they take food from dead decaying organic matter then they are called saprophytes or if they are present inside or outside the body of other organisms either they are uh, plants or they are animals or human beings and they take nutrition from them then they are called parasites so some examples of um, fungi as we know yeast yeast is unicellular then mushrooms bread molds aspergillus candida so many fungi are there they are multicellular in seventh class we have studied about their reproduction also that they reproduce by so many ways so yeast yeast is reproduced by budding in which we have we have studied that on um, single cell of yeast bud like structures are formed and these bud like structures they detach from the parent cell and they grow in new daughter cells 
or we have studied that studied about spore formation also that dust like spores are produced and these spores they remain in air and um, after uh, some time in favorable condition they give rise to new hyphae of the fun uh, fungi okay so this is about their uh, reproduction next group of microorganism is algae so algae they may be unicellular as you can see the first cell that is this one this is chlamydomonas so this is unicellular then they may be multicellular also as this is spirogyra spirogyra we know spirogyra is pond scum so this is a spirogyra then this is fucus this is laminaria laminaria is very they are very large in size so they may be present from unicellular to multicellular means very tiny to very large uh, plant like bodies they are having then they are aquatic aquatic means they live in water they are autotrophic in nature autotrophic in nature means autotrophic in nutrition means they are green in color means back uh, algae they are of various colors when you will go in higher classes then you will study about them so they are of various types so green uh, if they are green in color they uh, they will have a uh, chlorophyll pigment to make their food when they are in different colors then also they are having some photosynthetic pigments and they are able to make their own food that is why they are autotrophic in nutrition although some forms uh are uh, parasitic also they can cause diseases in uh, other plants also but most of them they are autotrophic in nature now next group of microorganisms are protozoa their singular number is protozoans this word is made up of two words that is proto and zoa proto means most primitive means too old zoa means animals means these are the animals they have they have characteristics of animals they are most primitive and they are unicellular also unicellular means they are made up of one cell single cell if they are made up of one cell it means they are microscopic also so protozoa are the most primitive single celled and microscopic animals they are aquatic or terrestrial means they live in water or they live on land they are heterotrophic in nature means they cannot make their own food that is why they depend on others for their food some examples of protozoa are amoeba paramecium trypanosoma plasmodium etc in class 7th we have studied about amoeba where we have studied that its single cell sometimes when it has to move it uh, formed feet like structure and that feet like structure is called pseudopodia or false feet which help this organism to move just like this some other appendages also formed in other protozoans which help them to move as cilia or flagella so as you can see in second example this one this is paramecium it has flagella on its body which help it in movement and here we can see some protozoans they are disease causing also means they are pathogens also so as you can see amoeba and paramecium they do not cause any disease in any organism but the next one trypanosoma trypanosoma is a pathogen which cause sleeping which causes sleeping sickness plasmodium that is the last one plasmodium is a pathogen which causes malaria which is the causal organism of malaria now next group of microorganisms are viruses viruses its uh, singular form is virus they are the smallest and simplest acellular micro um, um, microorganisms acellular means they are not cells and they do not have any cell organelles they are just made up of genetic materials that is dna or rna and which is surrounded by a protein coat next thing they cannot multiply without host means they cannot multiply on their own for this they need to enter a living host cell 
outside the cell the viruses does no, a virus does not show any characteristic of living things means they do not feed respire excrete grow or multiply that is why they are called connecting link between living and non living things because when they uh, live outside the living cells that then they do not show any characteristic of living beings but when they enter in the host cell in the living cell then only they start grow they start multiplying that is why they are called connecting link between living and non living things and when they multiply inside the host cell then they produce very harmful effects also so in case of other microorganisms in other uh, four groups of micro microorganisms we can say that some are harmful some are uh, useful but in case of viruses they all all are very harmful because they cause so many diseases in human beings in plants and in other uh, in animals also so some examples of viruses are tobacco mosaic virus this virus causes disease in tobacco plant and you can see this is tmv this is tobacco mosaic virus next one is bacteriophage virus so this is bacteriophage virus next one is hiv this is hiv virus and the last one is corona virus now next topic of this part is habitat of microorganism habitat means where they live so microorganisms are omnipresent omnipresent means they live everywhere they are present everywhere they are present in air water soil they are present on the surface of objects yes if they are present in air it means they are present on the surface of other objects also they are present on the surface and inside the body of living organisms in all living organisms yes inside the body of human beings also then they are present in hot water springs salty sea water ice cold water on the poles dry deserts to marshy places means they can survive in very extreme conditions also so microorganisms are omnipresent students next topic of this chapter is useful microorganisms means how microorganisms are beneficial for human beings so human beings have been using microorganisms for years to produce food items such as curd bread cheese etc and except that microorganisms are useful in a number of ways so here we will see how bacteria are useful in food industry so we know that bacteria they are helpful in making curd means curd is uh, we know that curd is made from milk so we know that milk has a sugar that is lactose sugar this is the milk sugar and the curd that is a starter that we add in the lukewarm milk that curd contains some bacteria these are the lactose now these are the lactic acid bacteria or we can say lactobacillus so this lactobacillus is used to make curd from milk we know that uh, lactose sugar is present in milk so when lactobacillus is present in milk then it multiplies in milk and it convert the lactose sugar into lactic acid and the liquid milk is converted into semi solid form that is curd so lactobacillus bacteria is useful in making curd also then next thing bacteria they are useful in making cheese and paneer also means the same bacteria lactobacillus or streptococcus they are used in making cheese as well as in paneer so bacteria are useful in uh, making of these milk products also sometimes some bacteria are used in making pickles and bacteria they are inoculated to cream to give flavored butter also so they are making uh, useful in making butter so these are the uses of bacteria in food industry
नेक्स्ट ईस्ट इन फूड इंडस्ट्री ईस्ट वी ऑल नो दैट ईस्ट इज अ सिंगल सेल्ड फंगस एंड इट प्लेज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट रोल इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सो मेनी फूड आइटम्स एज ब्रेड केक्स पेस्ट्रीज इडली डोसा ढोकला सो मेनी थिंग्स सो सो मेनी फूड आइटम्स आ गया विच आर विच आर मेड बाय यूजिंग ईस्ट सो वी नो that uh, how to make bread we know to make bread yeast is added to the mixture of wheat uh, flour or maida with sugar and warm water and uh, then it is needed to make a soft dough and then it is left for few hours for 2 to 3 hours then that dough rises in volume and why the dough rises in volume because yeast cells are present there and they start respiration and when they start respiration we have studied this in class 7 when yeast cell they perform respiration they produce carbon dioxide gas and bubbles of carbon dioxide side gas fills in the dough and it increases its volume that is why it makes the uh, dough very uh, porous and very spongy also so it is used in making bread as well as it is used in making different type of cakes and pastries also next thing yeast is also used in the making of many food items like idli dosa and dhokla also and uh, same thing the release of carbon dioxide gas by yeast cell make the food items very soft and we can see the tiny holes uh, which is present on idli and dosa and the dhokla and bread cake everywhere so this is because of the air spaces which is created by carbon dioxide gas when carbon dioxide gas comes out of the dough of these things or batter of these things then they become very spongy and so many air spaces space is also created in that okay so th this is the use of yeast in food industry now microbes in commercial production of alcohol wine and vinegar here so many microorganisms are used as yeast bacteria etc so first of all we will see how uh, yeast is used in the production of alcohol so we know that yeast is used in the making of it is used in the production of alcohol wine beer or so many type of other liquors on a large scale and how uh, we make uh, alcohol different type of alcohol for this for making of alcohol plant materials which are rich in natural sugars means carbohydrates or starch we can say so for this we use grains like wheat or uh, rice barley or we can use the potato also because it is also a rich source of starch then uh, we can use fruit juices because fruit juices also they contain natural sugar and when yeast cells they grow in the absence of oxygen they convert the sugar uh, which is present in these items they convert it into alcohol so yeast is very useful in the formation of alcohol different types of alcohol and we know when uh, yeast uh, respire in the absence of oxygen to form alcohol this process is called fermentation after that so many other uh, organisms or microorganisms are there which help in the uh, which help in the production of citric acid or uh, as we can say one fungus is there that is aspergillus it is used in the production of alcohol as well as citric acid and then one more bacteria is there that is acetobacter so acetobacter is useful in the production of vinegar so alcohol turns alcohol converted into vinegar so these are the uses of microorganisms that is yeast aspergillus bacteria acetobacter which are useful in making the making of commercial production of alcohol wine beer uh, cit vinegar citric acid etc now next use of microorganisms is as food sources students when we talk about the five groups of microorganisms in that five group of microorganisms only bacteria 
fungi and algae they are used as food sources so about bacteria we have studied that they are present in milk and they are useful in making uh, curd cheese paneer they are also used in making pickles and giving flavor to butter except that so many uh, other places also which are uh, where bacteria are used in food industry or food sources after that when we talk about fungi so a number of mushrooms mushrooms we know that mushrooms are fungi and number of mushrooms they are edible also because they are rich in protein and vitamins about yeast also we are knowing that it is also a, a, an important source of food because it is also rich in proteins and vitamin b complex now come to the algae algae are a potential source of food for all human beings it is widely used in china and japan because they use sea weeds as food source okay and sea weeds they are brown algae then <clears throat> means because uh, algae they are uh, very nutritious that is why they are used by human beings so first of all algae they are used as fish food means algae they are the main source of food for fishes and for other aquatic animals also as phytoplanktons phytoplanktons are the small tiny microscopic plants and diatoms they are algae and they provide food to variety of animals aquatic animals then cattle feed means some algae they are used as cattle feed also then some algae are there that belongs to uh, red algae as gelidium or gracilaria they produce jelly like substance that jelly like substance is called agar agar and it is used in the preparation of gelatin ice creams jellies and puddings then they are used in the preparation of uh, other things also in the ice cream also they uh, make the ice cream very smooth they used as a thickener in uh, salad dressing then they are used as human food also means single celled alga as chlorella and spirulina they are used they are considered as a potential source of food for increasing human population spirulina is even it is called as single celled protein because they are widely used means they are mainly used as uh, in astro by astronauts because they are of single cell and they provide lot of proteins except that algae they are also used in making medicines now next use of microbes is in increasing soil fertility and cleaning of environment so first we will talk about increasing soil fertility how they increase soil fertility we know students that some bacteria they live in the roots of leguminous plants means the pulse plant like pea bean or gram etc these bacteria they form root nodules and they live there in symbiotic association and these bacteria as rhizobium bacteria they are able to fix atmospheric nitrogen and they convert it into simple and soluble form which can very easily be taken by plant roots and they fix that nitrogen in the soil also which help in increasing soil fertility because we know that plants cannot directly take the atmospheric nitrogen so bacteria fix that nitrogen in the form of nitrate and the process of fixation of atmospheric nitrogen into simplest form or suitable form that can be taken by plants or that can be used by plants this process is called nitrogen fixation so nitrogen fixation is a process which increases the soil fertility so this process of nitrogen fixation is done by some bacteria as rhizobium bacteria rhizobium bacteria is a symbiotic bacteria which lives in the root nodules of leguminous plants except rhizobium one more bacteria that is azotobacter this bacteria is a free living bacteria which help in nitrogen fixation and except bacteria some blue green algae are also there blue green algae are also called as cyanobacteria because they resembles in some characteristics to bacteria as nostoc anabena 
oscillatoria they are the blue green algae and they also uh, help in nitrogen fixation and they also increase soil fertility except that we know that some bacteria and fungi they are present in soil and when there is any dead and decaying material uh, organic material is present suppose some animal droppings are there or dead bodies of animals or uh, plant twigs or leaves are there so we know that some bacteria they come there they feed upon them they decompose them they degrade them and they convert them into dark colored material and that dark colored material is called humus which increases the soil fertility because it gives warmth to the uh, to the soil it makes the soil porous it increases the water holding capacity and air holding capacity of the soil soil so they also help in increasing soil fertility by making humus now come to the next topic that is cleaning of environment so same thing happen in that case also when microorganisms means decomposers are present there they are very helpful in recycling of materials in the environment suppose dead organisms of plants and animals they are present there in the soil animal droppings means facial material of animals are present in the soil and no one is there to decompose them then what will happen after some time they will start giving out foul smell and other pathogenic microorganisms means disease causing microorganisms will come there and they will spread so many diseases that is why decomposers means microorganisms like bacteria and fungi they are present in the soil they live in the soil they feed on these waste materials uh, means these waste materials which are organic materials they feed upon them and they convert them into uh, dark colored material and when they decompose them they releases gases like carbon dioxide water vapor and minerals which are present in that materials uh, dead materials as nitrate sulfate phosphate potassium etc and they mix them in the soil and they increase the soil fertility also as well as they clean up the environment also by preventing the uh, accumulation of uh, the dead remain and wastes of living organisms so microorganisms they they are helpful in increasing soil fertility as well as in the cleaning of environment next bacteria they are present they are helpful in sewage treatment and biogas production so in class 7th you have studied that both type of bacteria that is aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria they are helpful in sewage treatment so we know that in sewage facial material uh, substances from household waste as soap and detergent and chemicals from factories are present and uh, they are Uh, treated before disposal in the uh, no, before discharging uh, into the river so during the treatment of sewage when an aerobic uh, an aerobic bacteria treat the sewage methane gas is produced and that methane gas uh, is produced which by the degradation of plants and animal materials also so this is uh, the biogas which is used as fuel next bacteria in industrial uses in tanning of leather and retting of fiber so bacteria they are used in leather industry for tanning to hide or uh, skin of animals so that leather becomes soft and as well as in the retting of fibers so retting process we have studied in class 6th so we know that in jute industry bacteria are used for the separation of jute fiber so jute plants they are tied in bundles and submerged in water and then bacteria it gradually uh, destroys the stem tissue and it loosens the fiber so this process is called retting and we know that jute fibers they are used in ma uh, making jute bags ropes and linen etc now next thing bacteria and fungi they are used in the production of antibiotics and vaccines so first of all what is antibiotic antibiotics are the chemical substances because we can split here antibiotics 
anti means against and bias means life means the chemical substances which are produced by some microorganisms as fungi and bacteria and which help in the growth or which help in the to kill the growth or uh, stop the growth of disease causing microorganisms means antibiotics are the chemical substances which are produced by microorganisms such as fungi and bacteria they produce some micro uh, they produce some chemical compound they produce some chemical substances and these substances they help to kill or to stop the growth of disease causing microorganisms so when you get sick uh, doctor also give you antibiotics so that these antibiotics these are the chemical compounds which will help you to kill the microorganism or stop the growth of microorganism disease causing microorganism which is present in your body or which have infected your body so antibiotics these are the chemical substances which are produced by microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi so here bacteria and fungi they are used to make some chemical compounds which help to prevent the growth of microorganism disease causing microorganisms we know that first antibiotic is uh, was made by alexander fleming in 1928 and the name of the antibiotic was penicillin and it was produced by from a fungus that is penicillium notatum next thing vaccines so what are vaccines vaccines are the substances which are used to produce immunity to diseases in the living body means they prevent the uh, they make the body that much strong that is uh, that your body can uh, face any problem that can face any diseases and vaccines they produce immunity for some diseases in the living body so immunity means immunity is the ability of the body to resist a disease okay and that immunity it may be of two type it is natural or artificial okay so immunity is of two types that is natural and artificial so by artificial means your immunity is increased by using vaccines so here you can see so many vaccines and so many antibiotics uh, pictures are there now what happens when microorganisms enter your body here we will understand the concept of vaccine when any disease causing microbe means suppose any pathogen enters your body your body acts in two ways okay first of all we will see the first the first way what happens when any microorganism disease causing microorganism will enter in your body suppose some uh, pathogen some uh, micro uh, disease causing microorganism will enter in your body so your white blood cells your white blood cells means your wbcs they reach the invading microbe suppose this is the microbe this is the pathogen they will invade it and they will eat it so that is how they uh, kill the or they uh, stop the growth of that disease causing microorganism means they will stop uh, the microbe to infect you to uh, cause some diseases in your body next thing some white blood cells they produce some chemicals and these chemicals are called antibodies so you can see here these are the antibodies this is your white blood cells these are the antibodies and this is a invader suppose it is a virus or it may be any fungal cell or it may be uh, any bacterial cell also and white blood cells they produce antibodies to fight the invader means to fight the pathogen and antibodies they surround uh, the invader and they eat it so this is how they protect your body to get infected to get diseased okay and what happen once our body has been infected by a particular microbe so the body it our body remembers which antibody was able to fight the microbe okay so this uh, this is the thing how your body uh, produce antibodies and if when next time 
that same microbe will enter in your body same microbe same pathogen will uh, again enter your body again infect your body your body can make antibodies and destroy the microorganism before it can make you ill okay so this is the process how you become immune means this is your natural immunity this is how you gain immunity by natural way now second thing how you get immunity by using vaccines so vaccines what are vaccines vaccines are originally they are the dead or weakened forms of microbes okay so when vaccines are introduced in the body means dead or weakened microbes are introduced in your body means they are introduced in any healthy body the body fights and kills these microbes by producing suitable antibodies means any dead or weakened form of microbes are entered they are introduced in your body in the form of vaccine then your body fights and kill these microbes how they will kill by producing some antibodies okay now these antibodies will remain in your body and it will protect you from disease causing microorganism when next time the same microorganism same pathogen will enter in your body that antibodies will be there to fight with those pathogens with those disease causing microorganisms so this is the basis of vaccination how vaccination is done or how vaccines uh, are made so so many vaccines are there you know that smallpox uh, vaccines for smallpox chickenpox cholera tuberculosis hepatitis polio that is how they are these diseases are prevented by this method so here your part 1 is completed now about the harmful microorganisms and food preservation and methods of food preservation we will discuss in next part thank you students